What is going on everyone? So in today's video we're going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to put out for a while, but I have been taking my time on to make sure I get this absolutely 100%. So just a very quick disclaimer, at the time of recording this video, this is a few weeks after Fishing and The Hunter's Cool has been released into the game, and I'm currently only level 37 in The Hunter's Cool faction. If they do make any changes or I do miss anything out, what I'm going to do is post it down in the comments or maybe make a new video depending on if they do a complete rework of The Hunter's Cool faction. So with that being said, let's just get straight into it. So there are three very good ways that I have worked out on how you can get to level 50 in the fastest time possible, but before we get into that, I just want to mention and some things that you will need to put out of your way so you can get those easy early levels. First of all, what you'll need to do is max out all of the commendations in the cooking section. Now, a little bit later in the video, I'm going to have someone come in who's more of an expert at this than I am, and he's going to tell you exactly what you need to do to maximize your grind with that. So just quickly, before we get into the fish that do help with this grind, I'm just going to mention a few things that are very useful on your grind that you're definitely going to have to take note of. So first of all is shipwrecks. If you didn't know, they've done a complete rework on shipwrecks, and now you can find many different types of fish and food and even types of bait in the barrels. So every time you do find yourself a shipwreck, what you'll need to do is pull up so you can have a look there and see what you can grab. Not only that, shipwrecks are the only place you can get wrecker fish, so do be on the lookout for them. So aside from shipwrecks, the other thing you're going to be looking for is mermaid gems. So mermaid gems can be sold to the hunter's cool and they do a great job in increasing your reputation because fish on their own don't overly sell for much, but mermaid gems on their own sell for a lot more. With that being said though, it is a lot harder to find them than it is to catch fish. So don't spend too much time finding mermaids, but every time you do come near one or you hear one in your proximity, stop to get it. So keeping all of that in mind, it's now time to move on to the fish. So just quickly, I'm going to let you know now that if you want to know what bait catches what fish you can either have a look in the reputation tab or you can go down to my discord have a look in announcements and have a look for the photo that i've posted that shows you exactly what bait catches what fish so moving on now to the fishing without wasting any time what you're going to need to do to maximize the amount of time you get and the amount of rewards you pull back is make your way over to mermaid's hideaway now that is on the far western side of the map also the beauty about this farming location is it's only going to be catching one type of fish so if you do want to save those commendations and do them once you've made it to level 50 this is your perfect chance to. And not only that, the best part about this grind is first of all, you don't need to use any bait, so it's great, and reeling them in takes roughly on average around 50 seconds. And I'm not even getting it from the time you throw the rod in, then reel it in and grab the fish, it's literally 50 seconds. So what you are going to be looking for when you make it to Mermaid's Hideaway is that big pond that is in the middle. What I like to do is stand on the rock, but wherever you find comfortable, stand there. What you'll be doing is looking for pondies. Now there are five different types of pondies, Plus they do will have their variations. So you have the charcoal pondies, which sell cooked for 40, the orchid pondies, which sell cooked for 75, the bronze pondies, which sell cooked for 115, the moon sky pondies, which sell cooked for 75, and the bright pondies, which are your rarest, that sell cooked for 375. So the reason I mentioned cooked is because every single fish and item in this game sells better and gives you more reputation if you cook it as opposed to when you don't. So no matter when you do catch a fish, always cook it and make sure you don't sell it without being cooked. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time and not getting the maximum amount of profit that you should be getting. Now, if you do manage to catch the trophy variants of any of these fish, unless it is the trophy charcoal, they're all going to sell for over 100. So that does mean you'll get more rep. So in my experience, a rough median level of what you'll get is after 45 minutes of grinding that will be one whole level but if you are under level 10 in the hunter's cool you'll notice that it's going to be even half that or if not a significant less amount of time so no matter if you are solo or with other people farming for pondies is always going to be your best way to reach level 50 but although this method is very efficient it's not always the easiest way to level up there is one other way that i'm going to talk about i don't find this as effective but it does take a little bit less time but it does require more of a setup so this is going to be up to you to work out which method you prefer so first of of all, what you're going to need to do is assemble a crew, which can either be done through your friends, or if you don't have anyone to play with, feel free to join my Discord, use the Looking for Crew chat, and try and find some people there. All links will be down in the description. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure there is an active skull fort in your server. If there is one, the next step will require you to get as many grubs as possible. Now, a nice amount of grubs to get is usually 20. As I said, this can take a while, but you're going to need them. So once you have around 20 grubs on your ship or on your person split between the crew, what you'll need to do is go to that skull fort, then make sure you get as close as you can without finishing it. It is very crucial that you don't finish the skull fort. So for this method, I'm going to be talking about two people, but of course you can just work your own way, then enhance this to either three or four people. So essentially you're going to have one person on your crew or two, 
if you do have more, it's completely up to you. Continuously farming for sand battle gills. Now sand battle gills are the rarest, but they do sell for 1,875 and 3,125 if they are the trophy variant. So the way to know if you do have a sand battle gill on your line is they will be extremely white with red fins. Now they do look a little bit like the Umba splash tail, so just don't get confused with the Umba splash tail and the sand battle gill. So the way you can maximize your time trying to find the sand battle gill is every time you do see a battle gill bite your line, if it's not the sand battle gill, snap your line back. That can either be done by pressing right click on your mouse or I do believe left trigger on your controller. So there's no definitive way that I can tell you how long this is going to take. In some cases it can take five minutes or it can take five hours. Unlikely, but you know, possible considering it is RNG. So while the one or two people on your crew are continuously farming for sand battle gills, do remember you need grubs on your line to catch them, you'll have another person catching every single battle gill they can get. It does not matter what type you pull up as long as you pull up a sand battle gill. Now you can use the same rod snapping technique as well to make sure every time you do rind one up it is a battle gill. Not only does this increase the amount you can sell for, it also saves the amount of grubs that you do end up using. Also when you are doing this rod snapback technique what you'll need to do is make sure you pull the line back before the fish does bite your line otherwise you will lose the bait. So they are my two best techniques for maximizing your hunter's cool grind when it comes to fishing. Now now I'm going to pass it over to my friend where he can talk about what you'll need to do to maximize your cooking commendations. Now remember, if you are a low level, what I suggest you do is finish these before you do any other technique. Although he is going to mention a very good technique where you can get some of these cooking commendations while also fishing for pondies. So that being said, let's just hand it over to Kamana to continue this video. Alrighty, so now that the fishing is done, time for the other half of the Hunter's Call faction. We'll start with one of the best things they've added to the game and look at the cooking mechanic. In Sea of Thieves you'll notice in your ship and on islands and outposts there are cooking stations aka pans from the PUBG franchise set up so that you can cook your meat. Cooking meat grants you the ability to consume it without turning your mouth into a green fountain. It also gives you a big health boost and a bit of regenerative health to boot, so that's pretty cool I guess. Each type of meat cooks in specific times, as you would guess the bigger the meat the bigger the cooking time. Normal fish usually goes for around 45 seconds, pork, chicken, snake and shark 1 minute 5 seconds, trophy fish is 1 minute 35 seconds and lastly meg and kraken meat at 2 minutes 5 seconds. Now that we know how long each takes to cook you need to understand how it looks and sounds when it's cooked. I'm not doubting your ability to count I'm just saying it's better to hear it cook rather than to mentally count the seconds pass as you cook or stare intently at the pan hoping you develop laser eyes to make your stuff cook faster. As for fish the telltale way to know if a fish is cooked is just to look at the eyes. If it's white or pale white it's good. As for the other meats, usually when the entire meat is a dark brown colour, it's usually ready by then. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you what colour it is when it's burnt. However, the best way to tell, and this is true for all types, is once it's ready, the pan will emit a large amount of smoke, followed by what sounds like oil popping in a covered pan. If you don't know what it sounds like, that's what it sounds like. Now that we've covered that, you're ready to hunt your animals. Best way to do that is using the blunderbuss for every land animal, from chickens to snake. The reason is simply put, Blunderbuss in close range insta kills helpless food. And when you're stocked up on meat, you're ready to start your cooking. Now for me personally, the best hunting grounds that I found was Cannon Cove, Mermaid Hideaway and Snake Island. My reasoning behind this is 1. The distance between island and sea post. 2. The amount of pans available within a close proximity on the islands. And 3. The animal it provides. Now what I suggest is start with Snake Island for snake and pigs. Park your ship between the westernmost island and middle island so that you essentially have 4 pans to work with. I'll let you figure out where the pans are. When you've committed temporary genocide on the island, just sail eastwards to Stefan's spoil. Sell your stuff and sail back as the animals should spawn back. After an hour or two, snakes and pork accommodation should be grade 5 with relative ease. If the pork isn't quite there yet however, no need to worry, just sail towards Cannon Cove and dock opposite side of the docks and as near to the shore as possible and then repeat the process. Now Mermaid's Hideaway is still a good island despite being quite far from the sea posts. The saving grace it has is there are three pans on the island and if you have a friend with you, one can fish for pondies while the other focuses on the animals. As for sharks, megs and kraken, you can't actively farm these as they're more they will come to you sort of situation, while the sharks are a little more lenient on that regard. But if per chance they do appear, try to take the time to hunt them down. Now that's about it for the Hunter's Call. I hope you find this video fun and helpful, and if you'd like to, follow me and see what shenanigans I get up to. My channel's in the description. Patreon, link in the description. Please support me for my nerd habits. Or follow me on Twitter, that helps too. Okay, thanks, bye. Listen.